What's going on guys, Blender Bench here, and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to go about doing retopology inside of Blender. Now this video you guys see in front of you at the moment is a add-on called Retopo Flow 3, and it's definitely one of the best retopology tools for Blender. But if you guys can't afford that and don't have access to uh, getting that, I'm gonna show you guys how to do retopology from scratch. So let's get into it. So here we have a scope that I did using the scoping tools. And if you just select it and hit tab, we can take a quick look at the topology and you see that this is made up of millions and if not millions of faces. So our goal is to, uh, you know, decrease this amount by using retopology. So one thing I'll do really quickly is select our model and uh, I'm gonna make it not selectable. So I'll go to the top right corner and select this filter icon here. And then once you hit that drop down, we can select this icon here, which is selectable. Now we have these new icons on the side, and this allows us to check these on and off to make it uh, not selectable. So you don't accidentally touch it while you're retopologizing because this can be problematic later on. So let's hit Shift A and let's add a quick plane. And what this plane will do is act as a face once we start retopologizing. So let's hit R and rotate it and have it uh, descaled. And I want to descale it to the size that I want the first face to be. Now I'll hit G and I'll just move it outside of the model. I want to have it as close to the model as possible. And now let's select our face here and let's hit tab to enter edit mode. And let's go to the left and let's just select this icon and let's choose tweak. And let's snap this face to the model. So let's go up to the top and select this magnet icon, which is the icon for snapping. And then we want to hit the drop down right next to it. And let's turn on face. And then we're going to have the option to check on project individual elements. Once we have that done, we can now, you know, uh, go up to the top and select vertices. And now we can select any of these vertices, hit G and we can move this around. And although this works fine, we can get a better result by uh, adding a couple of modifiers to this. And let's just take a quick look at this. You see, it's far away from the model. It's kind of hard to see if it's working properly. So let's go to the right and let's select this wrench icon, which is the icon for the um, modifier properties that we can add a modifier to it. And let's look for shrink wrap. And we're going to select that. And then we're going to go to where it says target. And where it says target, select the eyedrop tool. And then we're going to select our model. And for me, it's going to be the cylinder here, but for you, it may be something different. Once you have that selected, watch how this now snaps to the surface. And where it says snap mode, it says on surface, let's change this to above surface. So that way it's always on top of your model. And if you drag to the right, you see it starts to move away from the surface that you're retopologizing. See that? And if you move to the left, it starts to bring it closer and then eventually goes through your model and you don't want that. So somewhere around 0 0.1, 2 or 3 is always going to be a great solution. And once you have that there, we can also toggle this off so we can't see double. And let's just hit this icon here. Now you just see the result versus the result and how it was previously. And although this is good, I think we can add another modifier to get a better result on the other half without doing all the work twice. So let's add a mirror modifier. And just like we uh, used the eyedropper tool before, we're going to use it once again, and we're going to select the mesh. And for me, it's going to be the cylinder. And you see it's duplicated on the other end. And there's something else we might want to check on, and that's going to be clipping. And that's um, just to ensure that there's no overlap right on the symmetry line. So if we select one of the vertices, you see it quickly snaps to the center and it doesn't overlap. So we can just move the, these two vertices over as well. You see it's mirroring on the other end. And let's just toggle off clipping so you can see the effect without it. So if I hit G, you see how there's overlap. So that's why it's good to check that. So it's right there in the center, no overlap, perfectly fine. So now I think we can add some material to this. So let's go to the material properties. Let's add new. And then typically you can just change the base color and then you'll see a result 
but um, that's just the actual material versus the um, viewport. So let's scroll down and let's go to viewport display. And here we can go to color and then choose a color. And I usually choose blue because I'm used to using retopology tools inside of Maya. But uh, you have the option of choosing any color you desire. But like I said, I use blue, so I'll just leave it here. So now let's talk about adding more topology to this. So at the top left, you can see we're in vertice mode. You can switch to edge mode and face mode. And you can do that quickly by using the hotkeys one, two, and three on the keyboard. And that's not to mistake it for the numbers on the number pad. So with that being said, we're gonna go to edge mode and we can um, select the edge and hit control, right click to add more topology. So just select the edge, control, right click, and you can start to see how you can quickly add more and more uh, faces to the scene. So let's add a couple more down the middle and then we can hit one, which is vertice mode and we can start to move these in the center. And remember we have snapping on, so it snaps to the center. So really quick, I'll hit tab and then I'll um, exit out of this mode and I'll go to object mode and let's just do a quick comparison between the topology on the actual sculpt versus the new topology. And you see quickly that it's a lot lower and that's what we want for retopology. And also you can use the poly build button here or tool and which allows you to select the edge and then um, control left click to create more and more faces by starting off with a uh, tri then now turning it into a quad. And I'm not going to talk too much details about retopology. I'm just showing you guys how to use the tools if you don't have the add-ons. But using the add-ons is definitely a lot more efficient because that's their job because Blender doesn't have a lot of retopology built into the system. So that's why there's um, more add-ons. So in a uh, vertice mode, another way to add more geometry to the um, low poly is um, selecting a vertice and you can then hit control, right click to add more vertices. And once you have, you know, four vertices or two edges, you can then go back into edge mode, select two or more edges and hit F and that will fill that with the face. So if you want to work that way, this, that's also a possibility. You can just select um, multiple edges and hit F and it will fill that up with the face. And these are just a few ways to go about, you know, retopology inside of Blender without having any add-ons. And I'm telling you guys, add-ons will speed up your workflow tremendously. And also you can use the standard poly modeling tools like adding edge loops with control R to round off some of these harsh, uh, sharp corners. And then you can add different modifiers like solidify to add thickness and create things like uh, mass, um, you know, eyebrows. And I'll touch more on this in um, the upcoming videos. So if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next one.